What up, nerds? All right. Ow. So, today, I changed my mind on what I'm doing. I'm going to replace the rear shocks and springs on Cricky's wagon. Do a little test driving. Figure out a way to get a temporary plate. And then, Monday, I'm going to drive this thing to Harrisburg to the DMV. It's about an hour and 15 minutes away. It'll be the first road trip this thing's been on and about four years, probably closer to five years. It'll be a good test drive for me. Uh, see if it's gonna be a little reliable. And then I'm also gonna get it registered. It'll be completely legal. And then it'll start being our, you know, going to town vehicle or going to the grocery store vehicle. The please stop driving up 250. It only gets 14 miles to the gallon vehicle. So let's get sorted. So one of the first things I gotta do is put a battery in this. I keep taking the battery from one vehicle and putting it in another just so I can drive it around. So this is the battery I had in the other wagon. I'm just going to put in here for now. Oh, shoot. Now, last time I drove this, or last time I put this on, I snapped my thing. i got to redo this already. So let me, let me start that. All right. So I went and got some number 14 uh, cell tapping screws. They actually use like a big, it's almost like a 10 millimeter head bolt. So I moved my ground for my relay over here and then redid my relay or my uh, voltage regulator ground and my second alternator ground here. It's pretty sturdy now. And now I can move along to the back. So once you get your car up on a jack, I jacked mine up straight from the rear axle. Um, you have to support it with jack stands so that you can then lower the rear axle. So on a K car, there's a real convenient spot. We'll use a little up periscope at angle right here. That little pad right there, it's right where you want your jack stand to be. And realistically, you kind of want the car as low as, low as to the ground as you can get it. So that's a little safer. So, like this jack, I don't even have extended any. I'm gonna try and do the same thing on the other side. This one, yep. So it looks like I can just lower the car straight down on these little triangles. We'll go from there. So Right here, you can see some of the problems. I've jacked it up, I've put it on jack stands, let the axle droop. This side is down completely. And this side is tucked up in the wheel well. So I'm pretty sure that this shock is seized and it's not moving. So I know that I said I was gonna put air shocks on this. I decided against that and reason is entirely cost. Um, because I'm trying to do this, get this on the road as cheap as possible. In the future, I might switch to air shocks, but for now, um, just, you know, parts store shocks and springs that I already had are what's gonna go in. So my other wagon, I was given a set of springs by my buddy Greg, <clears throat> and uh, they're 225 pound springs. They're 10 and a half inches long, which actually raised the rear of the car, probably half an inch and kind of just leveled it out because I'd put PT Cruiser struts and springs on the front, which raised the front a little from where it was. So the plan is for this is I'm just going to put the springs that are on the back of that on this wagon. And then the shocks I got were actually from Napa. They're just the Napa low end brand. But Napa was the only company out of uh, the three places I went to that could get me shocks like quickly um actually autozone couldn't get them at all advance auto couldn't get them at all uh i could have ordered them from rock auto but i wouldn't have them until monday so napa was the only place that could get them so napa knows how to order shocks 
anyway uh yeah let's get the wheels off of this and then see what we can find under here that was harder than it should have been There's wasp's nest in there. That's cool. All right, so what I've done is I've somewhat resupported the rear axle because once I drop this bolt out and this shock becomes unsupported, this is gonna drop and it'll drop like crazy. So there's a bolt that runs through the bottom here. I need to get out and I'm not sure how I'm going to reach it just yet because usually, usually I can, uh, you know, let the rear axle droop. I can come in from the side and get it out with a 15 inch or 15 inch, 15 millimeter socket on a wrench. But this is going to be a little harder. I might have to go through the top bolt. I want to wrestle around with this breaker bar here real quick and see if I can get it in there. Oh, yeah, it looks like I can start from the bottom. Yep. All right. Oh, it's not even in there that tight. So that's, that's not too bad. Go get my other 15. I'll be right back. There we go. Got it started. So, after I backed out the bolt a bunch, it basically got wedged in between the shock and the shock mount, and I wasn't exactly sure what to do. So what it did next is I busted out a hammer and a chisel and just tried to knock it out of the perch. Wow, this thing's really fighting. Get out, almost. Hi, Peanut. Alright, got it out. So, 
this side should be a little easier because it doesn't have the pan hard bar in the way. So I just gotta undo those two bolts there. Un well, undo the bolt there, undo the bolt at the top, pop it out, and then I can lower the axle down and pop the springs out. Dueling wrenches action going on there, but anyway, that's out now. Make sure you always put your bolts and fittings and stuff back together so that you don't lose it. You know, I'm going to promptly throw this on the ground. So now, once you have the shocks disconnected, you can lower the axle. not up high enough <laughs> oh no I have to pry the springs out of it oh, you know what I'll just shock apart. There we go. Do the same thing on the other side. So that's everything I took off the rear. Those are the springs I'm putting on. So these are the factory air ride springs. They're pretty tall. The wire is not that thick. And these are Shelby Daytona springs, which have a slightly thicker wire and they're a lot shorter. So these have a much higher spring rate while having a about the same ride height but the problem i had with this car was this shock was totally frozen in place and then this one was blown and actually when i took it off it started leaking fluid so it was on the verge of being blown so that's why the last time i drove this it was all against the bump stops so I'm going to toss these springs in along with my brand new Napa shocks. Yeah, let's see, see what one of these even looks like. Standard blue Napa shock. Made in USA. <laughs> I don't think I've seen a shock made in the USA in a long time. Do not heat or open. Install this end down. Oh, it came with directions. They get installed offset. So that's going to be cool. I'm, uh, I'm pretty excited. Let's get these going. Oh, I got to get a bolt. Mm. Yeah, I might have to run to the parts store. I at least get one side started. Yeah, let's get one let's get one side started. Oh. Yeah, Jerry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, thank you. Alright, so getting these springs in is real easy. You just flop them in and they just go in place. You wanna try and match the coil if you can. But realistically you can adjust that once it gets up a little closer. And then the shock. It's not hard. It's just a little 
awkward to lift. There we go. side first. down in place. I gotta bring the axle up just a hair so I can slide the bolt through. Huh? Yep, you good? Did you almost get hit or something? What? Did you almost get hit? No. Okay. Me a solid buddy. Can you uh, jack up the axle just a hair for me? Yeah. Oh. Yep. I didn't. I didn't even see you do it. So. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Helped out a lot. This is going to be the same on the other side, so I'm not going to bore you with that. But I got to go get a bolt, so I'll be right back. So just got the passenger side all finished up. That bolt looks real long because it is. So is the top one. I had to buy new bolts. They ended up being uh, 75 millimeters long. So they're M10 by 1.5 by 75. The factories, I believe, are 60 millimeters long. I keep trying to touch my glasses. I got my contacts again. Anyway, um, I know back in the day when you used to buy bolts at the store, they would come in 10 millimeter increments. They still do up to 50, but then they go in 25. So I just bought what I could get that would fit in there. So I'm going to jack it up, put the wheels on, lower it down, see what it looks like. It's probably going to sit nose high because it's still factory suspension up front. And these springs are a little shorter. Oh, I'm gonna disconnect the air compressor uh, because I don't want it turning on and off because there's nothing, it's not hooked up to anything anymore. I'm gonna disconnect the little right height sensor arm, armature thing, whatever it's called. And then uh, I might take it for a little test drive. And then tomorrow I'm gonna drive it up to Harrisburg and get it registered. I'll probably document that for next week. But yeah, so uh, let's get this thing on the ground and do a little test hit with it. Just set it down nice and easy. Ah, it doesn't look half bad.
like I thought it was on the bump stops, but no, no, like the, the shock was frozen solid. I saw that, that was crazy. I realized I never shot an ending to this video and I just I'm getting ready to change the taillight bulb and found this and I figured you'd probably like to see it <laughs> what the hell this person I got this from I this all up to try and keep water out of it I don't even know what the heck is it feels like there's stuff in there whatever I, I'd actually forgotten about all this. She showed it to me when we picked the car up. But anyway, I'm gonna pop some pop a bulb in here and call it good. But hey, guys, just thanks for watching. I appreciate everything, and you know, an hour a day is gonna make the jack stands go away.